welcome back for another video. Today's video will be about the Colonia Chiques Gang in Oxnard, California, Ventura County, the 805. The Colonia Chiques Gang are a Mexican-American gang, the biggest gang in Ventura County of Oxnard. Luis Manuel Tapia was a high-powered leader of the Colonia Chiques. He was often heard encouraging younger gang members to assault rival gang members, kill suspected informants, enhance the gang's drug and weapons trafficking operations, and maintain territorial dominance by any means possible. Tapia was convicted by a federal grand jury in Los Angeles and sentenced to six life terms without parole, plus an additional 55-year consecutive term. On the evening of April 17, 2012, Benny Huerta was walking on McFarlane Avenue toward his parked car after visiting his friend Christopher Hannigan. Two men approached Huerta before he reached his car. They exchanged words and a fistfight broke out. Within moments, Hannigan heard two gunshots. The two men ran away as Huerta stumbled down the street, looking for help. Blood was gushing from what turned out to be a stab wound to Huerta's right arm. He had also been shot twice in the torso. One bullet went through his stomach and exited the left side of his back. The other entered Huerta's right flank area and lodged in his pelvis. Onlookers came to Huerta's aid while Hannigan called 911. Hannigan told the responding police officers that one of the men was wearing a Rams football jersey and black pants. The other man was wearing a Dodgers baseball cap. Surveillance camera video from the Red Barn Liquor Store on Ventura Avenue shows Appellant and Ricardo Juarez run across the store's parking lot at about 6.52 p.m. Juarez is carrying a dark shirt in his hand before he enters the store. Juarez stashes the shirt behind a scale that is standing near the store's front door. Once inside, the men convince a customer to lend them his cell phone. Jesus talks with other customers while Juarez makes a call and paces back and forth near the front door. They leave the store three minutes later, running down Sunnyway Drive, a side street. Benny and Juarez were arrested a few blocks away from the liquor store while hiding behind an apartment building. Officers also recovered the sports jersey that Juarez stashed near the front door of the Red Barn liquor store. An analysis of blood splattered on the jersey determined that Huerta was included as a major contributor to the DNA profile, while Jesus and Juarez were excluded as major contributors. A blue Dodgers cap and black Dodgers cap and a black sweatshirt were recovered near the site of Benny's arrest. Huerta was the major contributor of blood that stained the black baseball cap. Juarez was a possible contributor of DNA found on the inside front rim of the cap. Benny tested positive for gunshot residue on his hands. Juarez did not. At the time of the shooting, Juarez and Benny were staying on East McFarlane with Juarez's girlfriend and her family. Sometime between 10 p.m. on April 16, 2012 and about 8 a.m. on April 17, the walls of a nearby parking structure were tagged with graffiti consisting of the names Goofy and Slings 3 and the word Vesura. Benny goes by the moniker Slings 3. Juarez is known as Goofy. Jesus was a member of Colonia Chiques at the time of the shooting. Jesus had three other contacts with the law enforcement. On each occasion, he was associating with admitted Colonia Chiques members. He also has a five-pointed star tattooed on either side of his head and another tattoo that reads, C.O. Boy, a reference to the gang. His cell phone stored numerous photos of Jesus with other Colonia Chiques members, in which all of the subjects are wearing gang-related clothing and displaying gang hand signs. The screensaver on Jesus' cell phone is a photograph of a Colonia street sign. In a video posted to YouTube, Jesus and Juarez rap together about the Colonia gang and their willingness to use guns and violence on its behalf. 
Jesus Leva Rodriguez was convicted of attempted murder and sentenced to 44 years to life. Lino, Alvino, and Salas are members of Colonia Chiques. Colonia claims a large section of Oxnard as its territory. Lino, Alvino, and Salas were known as Venino, Flacco, and Barbs, respectively. They all had Colonia tattoos. Lino's tattoos included a large star on his neck and chin, in line with Colonia's use of Dallas Cowboy symbols, and another that said 187 River Rat, referring to a rival gang and the penal code section for murder. In 2006, Alvino lived with his family in an apartment building at 211 North Ventura Road in Oxnard, 211 Building, north of the traditional Colonia territory. Salas and his family also lived in that building. The murder and attempted murders occurred in the courtyard of another building on the same block at 2045 Ventura Road where victim Abraham Lopez lived with his brothers Moises Lopez and Hector Lopez, Lopez Building or Lopez Apartment. The 211 building and the Lopez building are 416 feet apart. Abraham and Hector belonged to a tagging group called DSK, which had about 20 members. DSK stood for Dark Side Crew or Don't Stop Crew, down Southern California or Dark Side Killers. Moises associated with DSK. Their oldest brother, 29-year-old Octavio Lopez, lived nearby and often visited the Lopez apartment, but he was not a DSK member or associate. DSK was mainly devoted to tagging property with its graffiti. It also defaced the group's graffiti. DSK sometimes fought against the other tagging groups. Some DSK members owned and carried weapons. DSK member Richard Gonzalez grew up in Colonia territory. September 4, 2006 was Labor Day and Gonzalez's 21st birthday. He spent the day shopping with Octavio and Moises. Octavio drove them back to the Lopez building in the late afternoon. Salas approached Octavio's car. When Octavio stopped the car, Salas said he wanted to arrange a fistfight between a Colonia member and Johnny. Octavio agreed to help arrange it. Gonzalez, Moises, and Octavio went to the Lopez apartment and drank beer. Moises' girlfriend, Michelle White, drove to the Lopez building at around 6.30 p.m. on September 4, 2006 to retrieve her game counsel from Moises. White saw Salas' brother-in-law, Alonso Hernandez, make a crude gesture at Moises while she was outside with him. Salas, Alvino, and Lino then approached White and Moises. Moises called his brothers to warn them that they were there and asked them to bring a gun. Moises and White entered the courtyard from the alley. Salas, Alvino, and Lino followed and surrounded them. The courtyard was bordered by an alley on the west, the Lopez building on the south, Ventura Road on the east, and the building at 2051 North Ventura Road on the north. Octavio, Abraham, Moises, and Gonzalez went downstairs and entered the courtyard. Gonzalez, who was right-handed, carried a beer in his right hand. He had a gun in his waistband under his shirt. Moises told White to go upstairs. White started to walk toward Ventura Road but turned back after Lionel said, Where are you going? It's alright, nothing's going to happen. White stopped in the northeast section of the courtyard, just north of the central walkway that led to Ventura Road. The DSK and Colonia members were closer to the alley at the west end of the courtyard. Octavio and Abraham were in the southwest section of the courtyard, facing Lino and Alvino, who were a couple of feet north of them. Lino and Alvino each hid a gun beneath his sweatshirt. Octavio wore shorts, a t-shirt, and flip-flops. Gonzalez was a foot or two behind Octavio and Abraham. 
Moises had moved to the northwest section of the courtyard, east of Alvino and Alino. Addressing Octavio, Lino said, My carno, which means brother, wants you to keep his name out of your mouth. He asked Octavio, who is going to get down and fight? Octavio responded that he was willing to fight as long as no weapons were used. Pointing at Lino's sweatshirt, which then covered a semi-automatic Tech-9 machine gun with an attached clip, Octavio asked, what's that you got there? Lino pulled out the Tech-9 and started firing immediately. Alvino pulled out a 9mm Makarov handgun and fired it. Several shots hit Octavio and he fell. When the shooting started, Gonzalez dropped his beer can and started to run away. Seven shots hit him and he fell. Gonzalez then aimed his 357 toward Lino fired several times and tossed it in the bushes. White was still in the northeast section of the courtyard when a bullet struck her leg. She fell and lay still. After Lino and Alvino started shooting, several bullets hit Abraham. He fell, loaded his 380, and fired it. While Abraham was down, Alvino pistol whipped and shot him in the face. Alvino took Abraham's 380 and ran away with Lino. Octavio died within minutes of receiving four gunshot wounds. Bullets pierced his carotid artery and aorta. The surviving victims required hospitalization and extensive treatment, including surgery. Abraham lost an eye and suffered other wounds in his chest, shoulder, forearm, face, legs, and buttocks. Two bullets remain in his head. Gonzalez suffered permanent disabling nerve damage, lost the ability to move his left foot, and needed a leg brace. Bullets remain in his right shin. White suffered a gunshot wound that pierced an artery and left numbness in her left leg. Officers interviewed Lino on September 26, 2006, and Salas on October 4, 2006. Both men denied that they were in Oxnard at the time of the shootings. Each man claimed that he no longer associated with Colonia. Salas denied knowing DSK members Abraham, Octavio, Moises, Neil Glass, or their fellow DSK member, Johnny Rocha. Salas initially denied knowing Alvino and Lino, then said he knew them vaguely. Lino claimed that he had not handled a Tech-9 in several years. Officers re-interviewed Salas on January 14, 2008. He again denied that he was in Oxnard on Labor Day and claimed he did not associate with Colonia. Elizabeth Aragon, the mother of Anna Hernandez, Salas's girlfriend, initially told officers that Salas was with her family in Bellflower on Labor Day. She later disclosed that Salas had not been with them and that Anna had pressured her to provide a false alibi to help Salas. Lino Hernandez and Alvino Joe Hernandez were convicted of first-degree murder. Alejandro Salas was convicted of second-degree murder. In sentencing Alvino, the trial court imposed a nine-year upper term for the Count Six attempted murder with consecutive middle terms of two years, four months for each of the Count Seven and Eight attempted murders. The court cited the same justification in each case. The crimes were independent and involved separate acts of violence. It also cited additional factors as justifying a high-term sentence.